Hey guys, it's Cosmo from OR Outdoors. It's been a while since we've done a video, but uh, looks like we're going to be doing a bag dump today. So this is everything I will be taking on my 2018 archery deer hunt in Oregon. Uh, only thing that's missing from this setup right now is my clothes, which are being washed. Um, besides that, it's going to be, of course, baby wipes. Uh, gotta let those dry out. It's better to dry out your baby wipes. It takes out the moisture. It's easier to pack in, less weight. So uh, let's start with this bag dump. So we're going to start with the core items first. So it's going to be tent, sleeping bag, sleeping pad, and bag. And then we'll go into all the small miscellaneous items. These are my core items. I got my sleeping pad, my tent, and my sleeping bag, and the bag I'll be using. Now I've had this bag for a couple years now, and it's it's been through a lot. It definitely has its battle wounds, um, but it's a great pack. The only negative I can find about it is that you got to include the 9 to 10 pounds of weight for this pack alone into the weight that you're taking with all your food. Some packs are lighter, some are 5, some are less than that, some may fluctuate here and there. This is a heavier pack. I'm okay with it for the price point. It's, it's fine. It does what I need to do. The bag cinches off. My zippers comes right off and then I can just carry my meat if I want that. I can take off this small bag right here and then attach that to just the frame if I want to do a day hunt. So when we get to camp, I'll pretty much zip out this whole pack, drop off all my gear, my food, my tent, my sleeping bag, and then just run with the frame, this little pack with my kill kit in it and some food for the day and some water. And that will be my daily pack for all day until I tag out. And then uh, either tag out and hike my meat back to the truck just with that frame pack in the same setup. Or if it's last day and I tag out, then it's packing out all my gear with the meat still. And they come with a strap system that I hold right here. The strap system will hook on by these clips on the side of the bag. So that way you can hold your bag with the clips and still have your meat cinched in with the flap that's uh, underneath the bag. Uh, the bag that I'm running this year and have been for the past couple years is going to be the Alps Outdoor Commander X Pack. Let me get this out. So, in Oregon, showers come and go like crazy. So, you never know what your weather's going to be like. This bag comes with a built in rain cover already. Uh, besides that, you also get a little cam holder or gun sling if you want to hold your gun or cam. We use it for our bows because we we hike in every year about five to seven miles and so we'll cinch up our bow depending on what day we go and if it's opening day or if it's day before. This year's going to be day before. So we're going to cinch up our bow to the pack, pop in our cam here so that we're safe when we drop our packs down. Uh, so that's the pack. Inside that we'll have my sleeping bag. This year I switched up my bag. Last year I was running a, I want to say it was an REI bag that I got one of the garage sales. It was super cheap. I got it for a smoking deal. Uh, I want to say it was the Radiant. It was good. It was just because it was a used bag from the garage sale, I got it for a good price, but the length and the width was not my length and width. It was very long for me. I was probably having an extra two feet maybe at the very bottom of the bag and I usually just flopped it underneath my feet which wasn't bad but it was extra weight that I was bringing in that I didn't need so I switched out my bag I now have a I want to say it's a Agus Max or Agus Max um, I got it off of AliExpress it is their G2 bag so it's their goose down and it should be good to go down to about 20 degrees more if I need it to go but comfort wise 20 degrees which is fine here in Oregon um, so that's what that bag will be. Tent, I also switched up my tent this year. I was running a Big Agnes Jackrabbit last year and a couple years before that. I've had that for a while and um, it was good. It was just a bit heavier so I'm trying to lighten up my load this year so that my hike in isn't as brutal or hike out if I'm hiking up meat. And uh, I think I've shed a couple pounds. I don't know how much but I'm definitely shedding pounds it's not ounces I'm shooting pounds on all my gear and so with this tent I switched over and it's a 3F ULG 
so 3FUL gear tent. And this tent is actually, instead of pretty much pole setup, like a freestanding tent, this is all trekking pole. So we hike in with trekking poles every single time. So it just makes sense to might as well just buy a trekking pole tent. It comes in at 2.5 pounds, definitely a lot lighter than the big Agnes Jackrabbit that I was bringing in. Um, I'm gonna still pack my other tent, but leave it in the truck. So that way if this tent does not work out this year, I can hike back and grab my old tent and then hike that in. But um, we'll see, I read some reviews on it. it seems pretty good. First year to try that out, first year to try out the bag. Gonna bring both of my old ones just in case, worst case scenario. Uh, but I'm hoping these work out because these both in combination are gonna save me a couple pounds, two to three pounds probably over my old gear. And it's just, it's easier. I'm already bringing in my trekking poles, so there's no need to bring in like regular freestanding pole setup. So we'll see how that goes. Um, as far as sleeping pad goes, I use a Big Agnes uh, Q Core SL. Um, I've tried other sleeping pads and they weren't that great to me. Either they are too hard to inflate, take too long, they pop easy, they're too thin, they're not long or wide enough. Um, and I just kept coming back to this one, even though this one's a little bit heavier than some of the other ones, like the Thermarest Neolite ones and all those ones that feel like you're just laying on a bunch of foil because they're so loud. Um, so I ended up going with these ones and a couple of my other buddies have these too and they're great, they hold up, they haven't punctured, they're thick, they're durable, they're somewhat lightweight, they're small, they compact, and their the thickness is pretty thick and with me being a side sleeper, it's great. Um, so that's what that is. So all this together will go on my pack um, and now let's move on to some more miscellaneous stuff that I bring with me that I probably shouldn't, but who cares? It's my pack, it's my my weight. I'm gonna take it because it makes me feel a little more comfortable out in the woods. So, all right. Also, I uh, forgot to mention it before, but uh, the trekking poles that I'm gonna be using are uh, Alps Mountaineering trekking poles from Alps Outdoors. Um, so far, so good. I used them last year on our deer and elk, and no bends, no breaks, no nothing. They've held up. So I'll be using these again to check out my 3F ULG gear tent and see how that works out and pitch as well. <laughs> so miscellaneous stuff. Um, I'll start off with my camera gear this year because I'm changing up my whole camera gear also. Uh, last year and the years before that, we've all ran, as Aura Outdoors ran, DSLRs and Sony cameras and handy cams, all those things. and. We all brought our own tripods, we all brought monopods, and a shit ton of freaking batteries. <laughs> More batteries than I think I have ever brought any time or anything. And uh, that's because you can't charge DSLR batteries out there that well. And uh, so this year I'm still bringing my carbon fiber tripod. Uh, this is super lightweight, it's about like a pound, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, but it's super light, super compact. So I'll be bringing that, and this year, instead of a DSLR, I'm gonna be bringing my iPhone. Um, now, the iPhones nowadays are shooting in such good quality that it's competing somewhat, somewhat, with a DSLR. Um, I mean, you're gonna do so much more with a DSLR, trust me, I know. Brother's a photographer, I'm a videographer. You can do so much more with a DSLR, but the weight that you'll be saving from bringing a cell phone compared to a DSLR plus about 10 freaking batteries is a decent amount. Um, and the quality is going to be good thanks to my gimbal. I just picked this up a couple weeks ago. This is a Vilta M gimbal. So what it is is you'll just, right here, there's little stretchy things, little clamps. You'll slide in your phone. Okay, now I, I jimmy rigged it because they don't have one out yet, but a little counterweight. And what we'll do is, once you put your phone in there, you activate the gimbal, it will pop up and then rotate your phone for you. So let's, I'll just do it right now so we can see how it looks. So, phone's in. It somewhat stays, um, not really, because I don't have the microphone hooked up. Once I do all that, then it will balance out great, but 
This is what I'm talking about. You just press the power button and then boom, sets up. Perfectly balanced. I can go up, down, side to side, and it'll be smooth pans. Okay, now you can tilt, I can just hold, I don't even have to move my hand. I can just move the joystick and watch. Boom, rotates. So quiet, so smooth. Battery life, 18 hours, probably 17, 18 hours. That's not bad. And then with these being able to recharge with a USB, that leads into my solar power charger. To charge all that, so I'm going to be charging my gimbal. I'm going to be charging my cell phone out there. Um, I have a Anchor solar panel charger. Uh, I've used this last year on my elk and deer hunt. And it's not the fastest, but it is reliable and it is durable. I mean, you can still see this thing's covered in dust and sand and dirt from our last trips. Like, it's just bad but it still works and it still holds up. And it's not that bad in weight either. It's not too super heavy. Um, besides that, I'm running a couple other power banks just in case. So I'll be fully charging those before we leave. So that way, no matter if it's sunny or cloudy, I can still charge my iPhone. I can still charge my Delta M gimbal and I don't have to worry about it. And the power, like the power banks I have, some are solar power, some are not, but at least I'll have at least battery and juice to get those going again if I run out. So, still a little bag dump. All right, so I have four power banks, probably an excess amount of power banks I'm bringing. I understand that, and I will probably will be regretting it. But hey, it's what I want to try out. I also want to do a review eventually on all these power banks and solar power banks. Like these are things that people are going to want to know for future reference on what's good and what's not. And what's honestly, what's Amazon have good right now besides reviews and unbiased review, you know, like I'm out there five to seven miles. I need reliable products. So I'll be doing a review on these as well. And, uh, Give you my opinion but on the breakdown i mean starting with the anchor then i think this one is uh paula lanfo and then this one i got i don't know how many years ago probably like five years ago when i first started hunting and it's held up great i honestly don't think they make these anymore i can't even read what it was new trent i think is what it was but i mean these held up great and they're super light they're not like, super heavy Compared to this guy, this guy's, a, this guy's a bat killer right here. So I'm debating about that one still, but the rest I'm taking for sure. Um, this one is a Dizzy Oil. These are on Amazon for like 10 bucks, I think 10, 15 bucks. These are actually really lightweight compared to the rest of these. This is a super lightweight one, but this one is purchased for a certain reason that I don't think anyone else will need, but I'm one that I can't sleep without it. So we'll touch on this one a little later. Uh, this is the uh, X-Dragon, and this cool thing is, yes, it's a power bank, but also, boom, 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 as well. And just, I want to say even just open it up right there. It's picking up some juice just from the lights in the house. So we'll see how this one goes. It had some pretty good reviews on Amazon, so we'll give it a try and see how that works out. These all come in pretty heavy together, but it's, I guess I'm supplementing the weight for the batteries and the DSLR to get me more of these and to pretty much sub out the weight for these instead of the batteries for the DSLR and the tri the big tripods that I was bringing and the sliders and all this stuff that I was bringing. Yes, I'm probably matching the same weight, but as far as quantity of things I'm bringing, it's slimmed down a lot. And I mean, my videos will be smoother with this than they were with my DSLR that I was just using with a tripod or monopod in my hand. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, as far as this little guy, I'll touch back on that one right now because I found what I was using it for. Um, people are gonna laugh at me. Okay, I, uh, I have a hard time sleeping out in the woods. Um, so I, I bring a fan with me. Now this is a Gold Zero little fan that just hooks up to a USB charger and you just hook it in and then press it and it goes. 
and it's quiet and it moves a decent amount of wind but I, I sleep with a fan every night ever since I was a kid and it's hard for me to sleep without one. I'm bringing this little guy as well. Um, it's a little USB charger extender and it's just bends so wherever shape I want, whatever I want and you know it just allows me to plug in my fan and have it be able to hit my face still you know because the sleeping pad's going to get about two three inches and then from there it's my body and then the fan's going to have to get me somehow otherwise I'm not going to be able to sleep at night I'm not going to be able to wake up and get my hunting going so that's what I take with these power banks um, so one will just be for straight fan one will be for cell phone one will be for gimbal and then one will be as a backup for either one in case one of these shifts out um, and then I just have like Let's say there's no sun. Well, that goes those power banks. Now I have just these two. There's no sun. There's no sun or any partly clouds. It's just all cloudy and rainy. Well, now I'm stuck with the seas, and those three are packed in for nothing now. So that's why I'm bringing an excess amount so I can see how they do. Even if it is partly cloudy, let's see how much power these solar panel ones actually gather. So that's what those. Um, Bringing in a GPS. This is how all of or outdoors gets a hold of each other out in the woods. Um, so we all run with Garmin. I think one of us might not, but majority of us do. And uh, I am running with the Rhino 650. Had this for a couple years. Dig it. Nothing wrong with it. I'm not gonna change it. Works great. Holds the battery decent. Maybe about I would say probably a day, maybe a day and a half. Um, and then. That is if I'm being like really cautious and sparing up the juice or if I'm hunting with other like my brother or something like that or Toby then I can stretch that out to probably two days three days maybe because we both have them so we'll alternate who has them on at the same time um, so that's with that then it comes in with a backup battery pack so I have those uh, a little iPhone charger to go with my whole power bank a little USB micro USB to charge the power banks with the solar power anchor if all those go out. Uh, backup batteries for my Garmin and for my headlamp right here which I'm running a Black Diamond Storm. Um, I've been through a couple headlamps uh, and so far I've ended up with the Storm. That's the one that I've liked the most. I've had some of the lightweight headlamps that you just pop on and pull out you're good. I've had the lower models of the Black Diamond that were just the tiny little squares and you use your finger to slide out to turn it on or off. They just don't put out enough light for me. Um, so the Storm's actually really good. I picked it up at the REI garage sale for a decent amount. wasn't too bad at all. I want to say it was probably like 10 bucks, 12 bucks maybe. So it was a steal. I kind of passed it up. So that's what I'm running for headlamp. Um, miscellaneous gear number two. Let's do, we'll tack on to headlamp to little flashlight. Um, these are great for when we tag out and we're letting the animals sit and rest for the night to kind of bleed out a little bit more. Let's say we don't know if we want to go in at night or during the day. We go in at night or we're just seeing if we can track blood before it gets dark. We always bring one of these. These are the Alps little flashlights. Not bad. Fits in my palm a little bit more. Um, not too heavy. I think it takes two double A's and that's it. So uh, these double A's right here will either go towards my GPS or this if this runs out. Um, but these are great. I've had, I've had it for two years now and it's been great. First aid kit and some other hygiene products. So uh, toothpaste, toothbrush, Kind of a bare essential. Uh, some deodorant and possibly for chafing. Possibly. Um, I switch bottles because the uh, Sawyer sends out a bigger bottle than what this is. Uh, so I just switched it over to like, I think it was like a baby lotion or baby oil bottle or something like that. But this is a uh, Sawyer insect repellent odorless and uh, it's been great so far. Put that on during elk season when it's really bad with the skeeters. So uh, that's what that is. A little first aid kit. 
I have a plethora of things in here. I have some uh, heartburn medication. I have some Benadryl, some Claritin, ibuprofen. I have Band-Aids, you know, chapstick with Luco tape. Uh, some antibiotics, cream, super glue, and uh, I want to have a lighter in here with extra Luco tape. Can never have enough Luco tape. Uh, move on to. Should we do knives? We'll move on to. No, we'll do. We'll do this. We'll do stove kits. Um, so with my stove kit, I'm running kind of a jimmy rig stove kit this year um i've been through a couple things i've done just a basic jet oil flash that's what i used to have then i switched to like a titanium mug with a brs little tiny like super ultra lightweight um pretty much stand to put your pot on and then hook up to your jet oil seal and that was great but i just i didn't have the right size titanium cup for it and it didn't have like a somewhat wind protector cover so it took a little bit longer and just took a lot longer in general than a jet boil did jet boils are a lot more reliable to me than those were um, being so lightweight and tiny that brs just i mean yes it has a lot of reviews and good points on it it's just i don't know if i want to trust my whole four days or seven to ten days whatever i'm hiking on just that little tiny stove being able to work um so i usually bring a jet foil given i mean all my other buddies have different setups too so worst case scenario i could use one of those so i shed a little bit of weight by switching to a, the first gen cup instead of the flash um, i'm still using the flash bottom though because it still seats on the same um, but it has instead of the first gen that didn't have this little knob and uh, the press button ignition um, they just had like you just turn it and then start the lighter um, this one you just press the button and you're good to go so I'll be rocking with that, jet oil feel. When I say Jimmy Rig is because two things. One, it's not the same product. Like it's mixed up together. Um, two, it doesn't sit properly in it as well. There's a little bit of play. So once the lid goes on, it's a little wobbly. But I mean, I'm cool with that. It just goes into a compression sack anyways. So with that, a little towel. We'll see a summit packed out. Uh, see the summit spork, uh, the long one, because that fits in great for mountain houses. So boom, core item, money, money product. Um, so going to water filtration system, I run the platypus bags um, with quick connects, and they all hook up to our Sawyer, Sawyer water filtration systems. So. Um, this soil, this uh, platypus bag right here is a little bit more of a wider mouth. I'll use this for my dirty water. So I'll go into the, the lake or the stream, gather my water, come back to camp, come back to camp, cinch this guy back on to the platypus bag, hook this up to a tree branch or a nail or whatever is out on the tree at that time. And so full water, hang it up on the tree, grab my Sawyer, so you just Pop it on through a quick connect. Now this bag's full of water. The dirty water's coming down into your Sawyer, filtering, and then you just hang this on the tree. And then quick connect into this bag. And then just filter it straight through, let it gravity flow. Um, we've been doing these for the past, I wanna say probably four or five years now. And the setup's been great and it's held up. The only negative I can find about this is two things. One, you need to back flush your Sawyer. If you get too many dirt particles, it'll definitely slow down the amount of water that's dripping out. Um, they supply you with a syringe that black back flushes the whole thing. Or you can do this. One second. Um, hike in with a Sawyer, uh, Sawyer water. Hike in with a smart water bottle um, because one, it serves the purpose of holding water for you. So you can shake up your mountain ops. Um, but two is the cap fits perfectly with the Sawyer filters. And with that, you just fill this with water, pop that on, squeeze, and you back flush right there. 
So this now serves two purposes. You don't need to carry that syringe and that only serves one purpose. You now have two. So that's what I do for my water filtration system. I think that's what most of the guys from OR Outdoors does. Um, so that's that. Uh, as far as knives go for my kill kit, I rock uh, a Gerber knife that I got for my birthday from all the OR Outdoors guys. And they, uh, they got that imprinted with my name and OR Outdoors on it. So that's what I carry. It's kind of a sentimental thing to me. And it's super sharp and it has a tacky grip, which I like. Um, so that's what I carry as my main knife. Um, now as far as my like taking down an animal and all that, I bust out my Havilon um, because it has that interchangeable blade system. So I can always carry a nice sharp blade with me every time. The thing with the blades are, it's kind of a pain to get the blades off. So in that case, I bring in this little multi-tool right here. That's just, it's a tiny little guy. It's not big, but not that big. But I grab this, got that, boom, pop on, and then pull off my blades. So that way I don't have to use my fingers and then possibly cut myself if that's what I'm doing. So, boom, those two things. Uh, as far as game bags go, I carry some carnivore bags. Um, great, they're super durable, super lightweight. They're reusable, which is perfect. I love that. You can always use these again and 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 again. Um, and just keep washing them and you're fine. And uh, so I carry those. Those are strictly for my meat though, um, and not the head. With the head, I bring in this cheapo bag I got for like two bucks or a buck at Freddy's. Um, I use this for the skull, so that way if I take it to a taxidermy, you can just throw the bag away and not, not care about it, rather give it back to me. Um, I carry in this little bag right here, I have some uh, reflective tape, so that way I can mark blood spots as I'm going. Um, I carry in a couple trash bags, so either you can line your backpack with them and then pop in your meat if you want that. You can throw your meat in here and then throw your meat into the lake to keep it cold. There's just a lot of good uses for trash bags like this. Um, some extra gloves, so I can pop them on, feel like I'm a surgeon. <laughs> no, uh, just to keep my hands clean. Uh, I also carry in some baby wipes so that way I can wipe my hands off if I get any blood or on my on my arms or on my hands or anything like that or just in general. Uh, so that's mostly right there. Actually, no, one more thing. Ah, last thing I forgot with this on my kill kit. I carry this with me in my kill kit. It's a super lightweight tarp um, that I, I've had actually for probably six years now, and it's uh, it's held up great. I use it actually for for two things. I use it for one, for putting my meat on when I'm butchering the animal or then and there because we debone. So I'll throw the meat on here and then debone and then pop that meat into the game bags. So this is like a staging area from the animal to the tarp to the game bags. And so I'll use that for that and then I'll do a quick rinse on it and then throw it up and hang it over my meat if I'm letting my meat hang out for a day or two. And uh, I'll just throw like a little quick shade on it pretty much and just tie the tarp out so that way the sun's not just beating down on it. So that's why I carry this. It's super lightweight. I think I got it from Walmart for like 10 bucks. Um, and I, I still have it. I still use it every time. So that vinyl harness I run with the Alps Extreme. Um, it's good pack. It has, it had some flaws. Um, they fixed some of them. So uh, these little buckles right here were different last year to where when you walk they would squeak. So when I'm stalking an animal last year, and he was here, squeaky, squeak, 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 squeak. So we had to put some like felt tape on them to kind of like calm that down. So we can actually sneak up. They've heard everyone else's like complaints and they definitely changed up the style this year. And since there's a new one out and so far I've used it and I haven't heard any squeaks, no nothing. So I'm digging it, I'm rocking it this year. Um, the binos I'm using are the Vortex 8x42s. Um, a lot of the over outdoor guys use the 10x42s. Um, with my, the way I prefer to look through the lenses is I prefer a more wider view. Um, I don't know if that's because I use my glasses when I hunt and it's a little bit harder for me to see through the 10 by 42s than it is the 8 by 42s. That's just me, I don't know. But I just like more of a wider look than being more zoomed in. Personal preference. Uh, but Vortex, great. I've had some shitty ass binoculars before 
and these are definitely really good and that warranty bro that warranty though that's where it's at that lifetime warranty no matter what that's great warranty uh, I carry on a little breeze squeeze for a little wind checker always gotta check the wind um, range finder this is a big one this is a this is this is a big one Ooh. Vortex Impact. Just got it this year. I'm loving it. I'm loving it because my old rangefinder was really bad. I, I've had it. I've had it for a while now. Probably about f five, six years. I think I got it when I first started hunting. And here's the thing with me is that I tend to buy cheaper things because of the price point and then end up regretting it. And so I'm buying literally I probably went through five to six tents. I probably went through about three to four sleeping bags. Went through about three to four binos. About probably like four or five camo sets. I keep buying them and then like not liking the way they're working. So then I just keep them or sell them later on through the years and then just buy a new one, buy a new one, buy a new one, buy a new one. And when I should have just saved up my money at first and just bought the best product that I could afford at that time even though it took me a little bit to save for it because I'm now here buying this product when I've just spent all this money buying all these cheaper products I mean that's just me like I here's Vortex and then here's like some cheapo one that I had to slam against my thigh to to work so I can range out an animal I mean I wish I would have just bought this when I first had the money to, to get a rangefinder. Same with the binos. I mean, I've had binos just fog up on me and I just hated it and just did not work. So, yeah, last year I had a, had an animal out. I like, I want to say, when I got it to work, it was, I think he was 70 and then I slammed it against my thigh and then he walked out and he got more out to like 80, 90 yards. But like, I, I was like, oh, I don't need to range it. And I'm like, no, I should probably range it. And I go to range it, and I'm like, nothing, nothing, nothing. And so I slam it against my thigh, pull it up. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Now it's working. He's at 80 or 90, 90 yards. I'm not going to shoot that. Um, so the next animal I come across, the one shot I had off last year, and I walk up to this animal, I'm like, oh, okay. He's at like 60 yards, no problem. And I'm pulling my range finder up. Cause I'm like, I arranged that last animal, so I'm arranged this one. I'm pulling it up, and I'm like halfway here, and I'm like, no, he's at 60. Trust your gut. You don't need to use your range finder. I put it down, put it to 60, pull back, shoot, boom, right over his back. Couldn't believe it. I'm like, this this deer, it's a three point, just standing broadside, staring right at me, not even caring. I moved all, of, I had all day long to move, did not care, and I just did not range. So. This year, I'm like, I'm selling that range finder. I'm keep throwing it away. I don't care. I'm getting a nice, reliable range finder, and I'm gonna range every single freaking animal, and I'm gonna start ranging at the range, and just making sure I know my yardages. I want to make sure that I'm comfortable guessing what the distance is. And this year, I actually found out what really helped me was golf. Honestly, golf is what helped me determine my ranges. The way I think of it is, let's say 20. What am I going to hit with that? Probably my 60. My 60 wedge, I'm going to hit my 20. My 30, probably a approach wedge. So like these wedges and these irons that I'm determining what the yardage is, is how I'm like looking at the yardage. I'm like, what iron would I take to hit that? And that's been helping me a lot, honestly. So now I'm like, I'm good out to probably 50, 60 yards now because I'm like, oh, my 60, oh, my approach. Oh, my pitching. Oh, like maybe a pitching approach. Oh, that one, like nine iron. Like guessing these yardages and thinking of like, hmm, what would I have to hit to get that far? That's helped a lot. So that, knowing my range finder is reliable, has helped on that. So that's the pack we'll be running this year. Breakfast, uh, this is food that I'm taking for every day. So uh, this is food that I'll have for every day, but the lunch and dinner will change constantly. Uh, I want to keep my palate changing and not be so stagnant on every item I'm having. Besides these core items that I'm okay with because those are pretty delicious. Um, so breakfast I'll have some uh, Ignite by Mountain Ops. 
Um, I have some Tapatio, some big ass bottle because, I mean, I love Tapatio. Who doesn't? All the guys who are, who are outdoors go crazy for this. So, uh, big bottle of Tapatio. Um, I'll have a tortilla with cheese and pepperoni in it for breakfast. So, boom, those are my breakfast items. Um, after that, for like snacks on the trail or while I'm hiking, I'll have a little fruit leather and a little cliff bar. Um, for lunch, I'll probably roll with a uh, half a mountain house and some Cheez-Its. Cheez-Its are actually really good out there. I don't know why. Maybe Cheez-Its are just good in general, but I really like Cheez-Its out there. Um, after lunch um, and before dinner, I'll maybe have a jerky stick, depending on how hungry I am, and then a little fruit snack to kind of hold me over till dinner, and then dinner I'll have a mountain house. And then for dessert, I'll have a little Rice Krispie Treat. Uh, I prefer Rice Krispie Treats. And I prefer to have a little sweetness right after my meal. Just kind of a little like comfort item kind of brings me back down. But I prefer to have these because chocolate melts easy out in the woods and it's hot and it just gets everywhere. So Rice Krispie Treats actually get better when they get warmer. So that's why I picked those up. Um, and that's my lunch and dinners and my whole day food. Uh, enough food for the day. Um, so we'll see how that goes this year. Should be pretty good. Bow. Uh, the bow I'm picking this year is going to be a Bowtech uh, Overdrive with a tight spot, gold tip, hunter arrows, G5 Montec broadheads, uh, arrow wraps, and fletchings were all done by G4 Archery out in Hillsboro. It's my local archery shop. Uh, so I'm repping those guys, backing them up. Um, Got on a black gold sight, got on a bee sting quiver, or a bee sting quiver, got on a black gold sight and a bee sting stabilizer. That's my setup this year, shooting 65, pretty solid outs actually, 60, 70, years, 70 yards, so that's my comfort, that's where I'm going to be shooting, 1880, I'm probably not going to shoot this year, um, but maybe next year. Uh, the setup's good, might be looking to get a new setup in a couple years from now. Definitely want to get new arrows next year. I'm going to be looking into those like FOC stuff, learning more about that. I'm already looking into possibly getting like the VAPs. So let me know if those, uh, if you have any experiences with VAPs or whatever it is you shoot and uh, you know how they're doing for you. Uh, we'll talk about camo since that's the next thing. Um, got my Crocs, you know, my Crocs. Uh, so I bring in my Crocs with me. I just throw them on the outside of my pack. Um, they're great to slip into when you're uh, not wanting to be in your boots and you come back for like a quick little power nap or quick little lunch with the guys. You just don't want to wear your boots around. You want to kind of let your feet kind of hang out and get a little, you know, a little cushion underneath them a little bit more and just kind of get the wind on your feet. You know, these are great. And especially like, let's say, the, re the big reason why I like Crocs too is, let's say this, you're in your tent and it's... 11 o'clock at night, okay? You have to go to the bathroom. You don't really want to put your boots on so when the cracks come on. So you just slide into them, boom, take out, go take your piss, come back, you're good to go. So Crocs are good for that. Crocs are also good for just letting your feet air out. Crocs are good to do a couple creek crossings with them. Um, go in the lake and kind of wash your feet off a little bit without giving like, a lot of sand on them. Um, they float, so you will never lose them. So it's <laughs> a good thing. Um, so that's Crocs. Shoes I run are going to be the Keen uh, Durands. Uh, I'm a big supporter of Keen. They just fit my feet very well. Um, I've tried some other boots. Uh, they're okay. I mean, I've had some hot spots, some heel slippage, and they're either way too heavy or they just don't fit my feet too great. Keens are nice and wide uh, instead of being a narrow footbed. So that's why I run those. They're leather, so they're a lot durable than some other ones. And uh, I don't know, I might look into some other ones next year or so, you know, maybe look into Krispies. But as of right now, those Keens are holding up great. I haven't really looked at a lot of other shoes right now because of it. So I'll be running those. Um, my clothes I don't have with me right now. Those are actually in the dryer. Um, but I'll tell you what I'm going to be rocking this year. Um, so ASAT has came out with some merino wool so i'll be running their merino wool hoodie with a quarter zip as my base layer instead of their crew um, the reason because 
I like to unzip that quarter zip and kind of let my bare skin show. So that way that steam comes out and that heat from my body gets a little bit faster of an escape. And it's, it's nice to be able just to rock that. I did it last year and it was great. It held up fine. And then I'll just have a their merino wool crew over that as like another layer if it gets a little bit too windy. So that way I have a little extra warmth. Um, and if it gets too bad, then I'll pop on the highway hoodie by ASAP. And that thing is nice and warm. So I'll pop on that. And if it gets really, really cold, like in the 20s or 30s, then I'll pop on their soft shell ASAP jacket and rock with that. Now, as far as bottoms go, I'll be rocking with boxers. I want to say they're going to be is it X Officio? Uh, I think that's what they're called. I got them off Amazon. I googled like Gear Lab reviews on underwear for hiking, and that was rated on the top like five. So I picked one of those up. I actually picked up two or three of those. So I'll be bringing those with me, and then I have the ASAP base layer bottoms that I'll be rocking. <coughs> Sorry, uh, ASAP base layer bottoms I'll be rocking and then uh, the ASAP canard pants which are actually really good um, surprisingly they're they're nice and four-way stretch so they're super like flexible you can move up and down without having to be restricted with them they're nice and durable out here for like I'm in the Pacific Northwest where you're going through bush all the time and brush and you're going through so much crap out there that you're gonna either rip something or like you're gonna take a bad fall and get punctured and just pop a hole in something and so far those pants have held up very good i've gone over a lot of like tree trunks i've gone through bush i've taken a couple stumbles and those pants have held up i haven't had any problems with them yet um actually no false i've had one problem with them um but it was an easy fix the crotch um started to separate a little bit um so I just had my great mother um, go through and sew uh, all the way around the bottom and kind of make that extra durable now. So now I have no problem. I haven't torn them since or had any stitching come out a little bit. Um, so she did that and then she also added, which is great because I love it, she added these two things, um, two little loops in the front and then one loop in the back so I can rock some suspenders because um, I am allergic to some types of metal so belts are not really well for me and I just don't like having a big belt on anyways so I usually just rock with the suspenders and call it good um, but those pants are great to use in Oregon right now they are lightweight they are durable they are water resistant and they are breathable those are like the core things you want in Oregon right now so I'm digging them I'm sure there's other brands that are doing great camo right now. That's great. That's awesome. I love it. I possibly will check them out. But as of right now, I'm cool with what I have. So that's what I'm rocking. And that's what I'll be using.